if you go back to the dictionaries, the encyclopedias, and you will find that back as far back as 1820, uh, in the United States in 1820, there was a guy named Mordecai Noah. And he, with other fellow Jews, wanted to set up a Zionist homeland in America. And so they picked this, uh, the, the place of the new homeland back in 1820. They picked a Grand Island, New York. And that was where they began to proclaim that they were going to found the new Zionist home of the Jewish people in uh, Grand Island, New York. Well, <clears throat> 1820s, that didn't work out. It fell through. That was okay because now 1903, in 1903, the British colonial secretary, Joseph Chamberlain, he suggested the theory to Zionist Theodore Herzl, the, one of the main leaders of the Zionist movement. So back in 1903, British colonial secretary Joseph Chamberlain suggested to Theodore Herzl that he should put the homeland for the Jews at the Mao Plateau in Kenya, Africa. The idea was referred to by the Zionists as the Uganda Programme. So the, it was pointed out by the by the British to the Zionists, why don't you uh, uh, take your homeland for the Jews and put it in Africa, put it in, uh, in Kenya, Africa. But after talking about it and thinking about it, the governments of Kenya and England and the rest and the Zionists, it all fell apart. They decided, no, forget it. They didn't. They didn't need the Zionists homeland in Africa after all, so it was a bad idea. So a couple of years later, in 1905, a large group of angry and frustrated European Jews, not in the Middle East, <clears throat> this was in 1905, a large group of angry and frustrated European Jews formed an organization called the Jewish Territorialist. And their organization was the aim of which was they said they wanted to be the founders of a Jewish homeland of some kind, somewhere. They needed to establish a Jewish homeland on earth. And so it was called the Jewish Territorialist Organization, 1905, and they they wanted to just find somewhere for the Jewish homeland. Well, that didn't work either. So it fell apart. <clears throat> so later on, in uh, 1928, in March of 1928, in the then Soviet Union, uh, the Soviet Union suggested that the Russian Far East would be a great place. Uh, it was a great place for the homeland of the Jews. It was very far out, away from everybody, and so the Zionist communist, the communists said to the Zionists, why don't you put your homeland here in the Soviet Union? And so the new Soviet communist idea was called the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, O-B-L-A-S-T. So <clears throat> this particular idea that the Soviet Union came up with in 1928 it, like the other three, it didn't go anywhere. It fell apart and nothing happened. Then in 1930, another brilliant idea was suggested by the British Zionist League. The British Zionist League in 1930 came up with a great idea that in Australia, there's a place called the Kimberley Region in Australia. <clears throat> and that would be perfect for a Jewish homeland. In Australia, so large, so incredibly uh, you know, large and spacious, and it was called the Kimberley Region in Australia. And so they decided that was where the new homeland was going to be, 1930 in the Kimberley Region of Australia. But after thinking about it for a few, for a few months, the Australian government officials they said, no, not in our backyard. That, that's not going to work. So that one fell apart again. Later on, shortly afterwards, the premier of Tasmania, the premier of Tasmania, Robert K. 
Cosgrove came up with a dazzling idea. He suggested that the homeland for the Jewish people should be in Port Davey, D-A-V-E-Y, Port Davey area of southwest Tasmania. <clears throat> now, this is the premier of Tasmania, Robert Cosgrove, and he said, why don't the Jews put their homeland in, in Port Davey in southwest Tasmania? That would be a great idea. But he died shortly after, after the suggestion, and everybody... You know, everybody decided, ah, forget it. It's just a bad idea anyway. So that didn't work either. But finally, the the Zionist uh, the Zionist leaders finally had the correct idea. They finally got a good idea. The Zionist Jews that were setting up the homeland for the Jewish people, God's chosen people. Well, they decided this time they were going to go to the Lord. They were going to ask the Lord to help them. And so the Lord uh, you know, did help them, and their, and their homeland was set up. So it was a smart thing after trying so many times and falling through. They finally went to the Lord, and the Lord did help them set up the state of Israel. So the Zionists went to Lord Rothschild, their Lord, Lord Philippi the Rothschild. And Rothschild, the lord of the Jewish uh, Zionists, <clears throat> he called one of his uh, prostitutes named Lord Arthur Balfour. Everybody in England knew that Lord Arthur Balfour, one of the big politicians in England, was nothing more than a than a uh, Rothschild, uh, you know, behind kisser, butt kisser, and that's all he's ever been. And so he was appointed. Uh, by the British Israel, Israel Illuminati Masters of the World to be the one to go to the United Nations for Lord Rothschild and present this idea uh, to the United Nations to have the British home to have the Jewish homeland uh, in the in uh, the Middle East and what we call the land of Cana. And so they went into Cana and just took it over. They didn't ask permission. They didn't ask anybody. They just went in with the British guns behind them, with the American military and government behind them, with the international Rothschild money and banking fraternities behind them. The Zionists went into the Middle East and just decided, we're going to take over a piece of land in the Middle East, and we're going to call it the uh, land of Israel, and we'll, we'll say that God gave us this land, and anybody who don't like it will kill them, period. So we're tired of asking permission. And so that's why today we still have today the land of Israel, God's chosen people, which is nothing more than a Rothschild banking United States, British banking fraternities with their military behind the founding of the state of Israel. So, <clears throat> so much for the holiness in the Middle East, because I have been saying for years, and I'll say it again, there's nothing holy in the state of Israel or the Holy Land. There's nothing holy in the Holy Land. Uh, the reason why is because all the stories coming out of the Holy Land are full of holes. And so once you see that the Israel today is nothing more than a political Rothschild United States British Empire political move on the world stage of which behind the scenes the Vatican and the international criminal syndicates uh, are, are behind the military movement in the Middle East and so it's a very, very dark story about the whole, whole idea of the Lord's chosen people. There is no such a thing as the Lord's chosen people. Israel was not a B.C. religion. The entire state of Israel today was started by the British Americans going through the United Nations and providing the money and the military backing to go in and just take the property and say, God gave us this property, so get out of here. We're taking it over. <clears throat> so much for God's chosen people.